V Rising is an action role-playing game with survival mechanics as you play as an undead creature of the night. You awaken after centuries of slumber in a weakened and bloodthirsty state. Explore a vast open world of dark fantasy, humans, and worse, the deadly sunlight. Rise in power and conquer the world of the living. And this rich open world that the game has going for it is what I want to focus on in this video. So why did the world in V Rising stick out to me? Well, to put it quite simply, it's because how alive the world feels. Instead of feeling as if I'm playing in a lifeless world where everything waits for my character to come onto the screen in order for the action to start happening, I felt as if I was playing in a world where life was carrying on whether my character was around or not. What do I mean by this? Well, there was times when playing V Rising where I would simply encounter two factions of enemies already engaged in battle with each other. That's right, in this game, it's not simply you versus the world. The game has enemy factions and they're not always friendly with each other. And since there are enemy patrols in the game, these encounters occur randomly in different locations, even if you're not around to witness them. And they do not just occur with regular enemies. Even some of the bosses in this game roam around the map, and sometimes they encounter each other and go to battle as well. In fact, there was a time where I was facing a boss, and another boss randomly came across us during our fight, which completely changed the encounter. Now, in a lot of games, if you're in a boss fight and another enemy approaches you, it simply turns into a 2v1, which could have been a problem because I don't know if I would have been powerful enough to take on two bosses at once. However, in this game, it wasn't a 2v1. Instead, it turned into a free-for-all bloodbath, which kept the game just so exciting. And it's not just enemy patrols or random boss encounters, or even enemy factions that kept the world feeling alive. But the environment itself actually had gameplay impacting mechanics. So the game has a day and night cycle, which is nothing impressive. After all, a ton of games have day and night cycles. However, this time around, the daylight is actually an environmental hazard. After all, you are a vampire. So mere sunlight not only damages your character, but it could also flat out kill you. So when the sun is up, you end up having to sort of dart around everything and try to stay out of the light. Whether you're dashing between the trees or giant rocks, you do what you have to just to stay alive. In fact, once again, I was in the middle of a boss fight and I was really not paying attention to the time. And boom, sunrise came. And it completely changed the dynamic of the fight. Not only did I have to battle the boss, I had to keep my character out of the sunlight as well. It just kept things once again interesting and fresh. On the flip side, sometimes you get a blood moon, which is adds to your character's power and it gives you a little bit of that extra strength during the night, allow you to really dive into playing the role of a vampire. Overall, it just felt so refreshing to play a game where you felt like you were part of the world instead of being the center of it. And keep in mind, all of these events happen with me simply playing on a private server with only a small group of friends that had access to it. I'm sure once I dive into the online portion of the game, maybe play on a PvE or PvP server, the dynamic of being in such a livable world would just go off the charts. How V Rising handles its open world is something I would love to see other more traditional ARPGs incorporate in their games. I'm not saying every action RPG should be open world, I don't think that's the case, but if they decide to build the open world route, I hope they really embrace it. Too many times we see a game start with all these ideas for their giant world that you could explore. However, with every season, every patch, they basically start to kill off any sense of adventure or exploration. For example, Diablo 4. One of the main marketing key points for that game was the open world. However, after a year, the game has started to turn more into running the pit, running nightmare dungeons. Or if you're in the open world, you simply just go to the zone where the hell tide is active. The open world concept of that game has sort of died, and I think that's tragic. While the game does have a plethora of problems, killing the selling point and what made it different in the first place, in my opinion, is the wrong approach. I'm not saying the pit's a mistake. I'm not saying nightmare, well, nightmare dungeons are pretty damn bad, but like, I'm not against instances. 
but I would love if they just made the world exciting, sort of like V Rising is. And this is not simply just to trash on Diablo 4. Even Titan Quest 2 is going to be another open world ARPG. And I would love to, for that open world to have that sense of adventure and exploration in more of a traditional action RPG format. I'm not saying all these games should turn into V Rising. I don't want to see base building, resource gathering, survival mechanics in a Diablo game, but it would be so cool if just the world of Sanctuary actually felt alive. But I would love to hear what you all think. Are you guys playing V Rising? What do you think of the game? And do you think that Blizzard or even THQ should look at V Rising when they're sort of designing their open world concepts for their games? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. By the way, if you made it this far and did enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I'm going to get back to the grind and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.